Good morning. morning. To all of you out there, as I was driving to church, I noticed that the sun was shining and there was not a cloud in the sky. And for those of you who are at home watching online, look out your window and I hope that you see the same thing. Now, the announcements for today. Uh, Today is Fish Sunday, so if you have uh, canned goods or would like to contribute monetarily, uh, today is the day. After worship today, there will be the uh, youth get-together following worship, and uh, Monday is PADS duty. Wednesday, April the 6th, will be Soup for the Soul at the Rock Falls Christian Church. And then on Saturday, this is not in your announcements, on Saturday, April 9th, the worship committee will meet at 8 a.m. at Benny's. And um, Chris said to invite anyone who wants to come, you're all welcome. On Sunday, April 10th, is Palm Passion Sunday. And we'll also be collecting for the Easter offering. Bell Choir will also practice after church. Looking ahead, there's going to be a Monday, Thursday communion service here on April the 14th at 5.30 p.m. First Christian Church of Rock Falls will host a Good Friday service April 15th at 6.30 p.m. And then looking to the more toward the end of April, excuse me, the end of May, there will again be a spaghetti supper, and that is going to be on Saturday, May the 21st. Are there any other announcements? Hey, I got one right here. I just wanted to let you know it's yesterday was Gail's 10th birthday. Yay! Yay. Yay. Gail's 10th birthday. And I'm not going to say how old, but tomorrow is Fabiola's birthday. Oh, well, let's give a clap for Fabiola, too. Okay, if you would now follow me for the, in the call of worship. Beloved, the remembrance of our Lord's passion draws near. May those who sow the tears reap with shouts of joy. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoice and worship in our Lord. We'll now sing the song, God is So Good. Some of our kiddos come forward, please. All right. Good morning. All right, I'm going to need you guys to do an exercise with me, okay? We're going to try something really quick. 
Um, let's go this way. Everyone come with me. All right, come over here. Everyone come in here. All right, just stay right here. Okay, now. You guys are gonna count to 20, and then you're gonna come find me, okay? Once this door closed, start counting. Okay, now, wait for the door to close. All right, I'm gonna go hide. They gotta find me, but give me a second. Where can I hide? Oh, I don't know. We'll go over here. Oh. Is that better? Are they coming yet? Okay. Okay. Oh no. This might take a while. Hello. Are they coming yet? <laughs> Are they just looking at the phone? <laughs> Did they not see me? I didn't anticipate this taking so long. <laughs> Should we give him a hint? See that? Oh, they found me. Oh, man. Whew. I was going to fall asleep back there. All right, everyone go back up. Okay. Man. All right. So, we, we, that was a quick little fun game of hide and seek. How, how many of you played that game at home, hide and seek? Well, now we've all played it. We've all played it now. We all know what it's like. You, you go hide, you find. Now, I remember growing up, I used to play hide and seek, but we used to play it, um, and we'd wait until it was really not dark out, and we'd turn all the lights in the house off, and we'd play hide and seek. Now, have any of you ever played hide and seek, and you've just tr tried, tried, and you 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 can't find the person you're looking for? Yeah. What does that make you feel like when you just can't find them? Sometimes you get a little frustrated, maybe, or worried. Maybe you think, or lost, yeah. Um, hide and seek it can be a good kind of uh, a practice or a simulation, right? It, it can teach us things about uh, things we'll experience in life. And one of those things we experience is uh, what it means to be separated from someone, to, to be looking for someone. Now, here's another example, and this is a little harder to recreate here, but... How many of you have ever been going to the grocery store, Walmart or something, and you get looking at the toys, and next thing you know, mom or dad's gone? Anyone ever, haven't you? It used to happen to me a little more than I care to admit. Um, but, you know, there's, there's a sense of panic that happens, right, when you get separated from the person you're with, and you're like, wait a second, where'd they go? And you run up and down, looking down the aisles, which where'd they go? Um, and what we, we learned from that is, is how it can not feel so good sometimes when we are separated from the ones we love. And one of the things we're going to talk about today in our story is this, this really famous story, of course, this parable of the prodigal son, uh, where the son is, he leaves, he goes off, he's on his own, and um, we learn about what happens to him, and we learn about how the, how the father responds when he comes back, but we don't get a lot about how that father was feeling while they were separated. And that feeling that I can imagine that father felt was a bit of panic and worry and sadness as he didn't know what was going on with his son. And that's the same feeling God gets when we separate ourselves from God, when we hide from God, when we're away from God, that God doesn't like that. God wants us to be close and to be in relationship and to, and to stay connected all the time. 
And so it's important that we remember in all our relationships in life, including with God, that we don't hide on purpose from God and we stay close to God and, and, and try to connect with God in any way we can. So keep that in mind in your life and in, in, in this day that you always stay connected to those who you care about and that you love because that connection is what's going to give us life and life abundant. All right, let us come forward and pray. Loving God, I thank you for this day that we share in today, and, and I pray that you're with each of us. May you guide us in our lives, help us to uh, grow following in your name, and, and Lord, just bless each one of us who has come forward today. Uh, give us strength and, and guidance and life and all that we need going forward. God, may you be with us everlasting, and we pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It is great to be with all of you today in worship and to join together now in this time to uh, connect with one another, to connect as a community of faith, and to uh, lift up together uh, these prayers that are before us. I pray in this time that we can all join, not just with each other, but with God's Spirit as we uh, extend our love beyond this point and pray for these peoples who are before us. We continue to lift up our shut-ins today, all of those that are listed before us, as well as our special requests. I do want to point out on our special request list here, um, we are praying for Jill Straw's uh, cousin, uh, Jason. Uh, his wife, uh, Gina, passed away recently, and she had been sick, and unfortunately she passed away recently. And so we lift up uh, Jason and the family um, and those who she leaves behind. Uh, Gina, and uh, just lift them up in this time as they are mourning that loss. Um, outside of those, are there any of these other prayers here that we have any updates on? Does anyone have any um, anything to add to any of our prayers, Connie? I know that the main that we have oh, please. Oh, yes, she had been waiting on that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, please. Any other updates or any new prayers you'd like to share today? Any, any other joys or concerns? We have the joy of birthdays. Mark, go ahead. All right. Wonderful. Whatever, please join with me now in a time of prayer. God, we come together today praying for your spirit to fill our hearts. Lord, help us to know that you are here with us. God, in all that we do, we pray that we can continue to give you thanks and, and love and praise for your blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And in every step of our lives, Lord, help us to turn to you, to turn our attention to your work in our lives, and to turn um, our thoughts and our, our hearts uh, to the everlasting love you have given us. God, as we have gathered together in this time of worship, we have come to sing your praises, to uh, join in, in speaking of your word, and also, Lord, to pray to you for your everlasting love to touch upon our lives. God, may your love extend beyond us here and into the lives of those who we are calling forth today. 
For we know that you are with each of these individuals uh, daily and, and every moment, Lord, and that you know them so well, but yet we intercede on their behalf, Lord, in this time, praying for your loving hand to continue to aid them and to heal them and to guide them in hope and love. For our shut-ins today, Lord, may you provide them with all that they need in this time for their health and their support, for the supporting hand of those around them, for all of their blessings. God, may you continue to be with them. And for those that we have listed here, Lord, on our special request list, may you walk with them in their journeys of faith and in their journeys of, of medical situations for their treatments and healing, uh, diagnoses, and all that they face. We give you praise today, Lord, that Cindy has seen progress following her surgeries, and we pray that that progress continues and that they're able to fully contain the infection and, and get her back on track. And God, we lift up to you the joy today of, of learning of the birth of Linda Hollingsworth's granddaughter, and we pray for uh, a life uh, abundant there and, and for the joy that that brings, and also pray for uh, Linda and her health as she uh, goes through cancer treatments. Uh, we lift up to you, Lord, the joy of birthdays entering into this new month. We uh, lift up Favi and Becca and Alyssa and uh, Yale and all those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries and, and joyous occasions this month. We pray for them and for the coming weeks and, and the coming year of celebration. God, for each and every one of us who has gathered, we pray for, uh, for us, for uh, those of us facing uh, struggles in life, for those of us have, having difficulties that we're walking through now. May you be with us, Lord. Help us to overcome, to go forward in faith and knowing that you are with us and, and following the path that you have set out for us. God, in all that we do, may we continue to give our life to you so that we may make this world closer to your image and, and spread the good news of your love bringing all of this together, Lord. We pray it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture lesson is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things of them, for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negrib. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping Bearing the seed for sowing shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves.
Our gospel reading this morning is coming from the book of Luke, the 15th chapter, verses 1 to 3 and 11b to 32. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and he went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion He ran and he put his arms around him and he kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on, and he replied, Your brother has come home, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command, yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The word of God to the people of God. When we look at uh, biblical passages in all of their glory, it's hard not to uh, pick this story out as one of the big ones, right? Uh, John 3.16 is, you know, quoted by so many people all the time. Uh, And if that may be one of the most quoted verses, this is probably the most quoted uh, parable in the Bible. This parable is one that is, uh, you know, we learn about from the time we can remember all the way until today. We're going to continue learning about this parable. Uh, because it's important, and it has, it has a word for us. It speaks to us. Um, there are things that we find in this parable uh, that, that are going against the grain. We can see um, the ways in which relationships are working here. The, uh, there's going against the grain happening, and so let's look at some of that. First, we see um, uh, the society in which Jesus lived, in which he was speaking to, right? As Jesus told this parable, this story, to the people who are listening to him, he was speaking to their context. He was speaking in a way that they would understand. Um, so the, the systems that were in place or systems that they would, have, they would have grasped it. They would have understood why the things that were happening were bad and why they were good. Uh, and so what we see here um, is that this society was one built on structure. It was built on tradition. It was built on family. 
And like every society, ours included, there was ways in which you conducted yourself within the larger system. There was what we call today social norms, right? Uh, things that you do and don't do. Family was being, at the center of that society was, was held very important. You were identified based upon your family. That was how you were known in the world. And so for the younger son to go to the father and to request his inheritance before the father had even passed on would have been considered a great insult. It would not have been proper. You, that, that's not something that was commonplace. For the, him to have done that would have been a great insult against his father. But what's more interesting in that is that the father obliged. He ended up giving him his share and said, "Go here you go. Um, and like any good son who gets a nice inheritance, he uh, goes off and squanders it away on um, all sorts of bad things. You know, I, I, I guess in our language, he had a one night in Vegas and he came home broke. But he's far away from home. He's homeless. He's got nothing left. Um, I'm assuming based on the fact that the father, when he comes back, says, give him a robe and sandals, he probably sold those away or traded them away for food or something. So he didn't have anything. He traded away every last bit of what he had, uh, and found himself needing to, to find work and gets hired on to tend to some pigs. Now, the importance, we've got to really focus in on that here. Jesus, in this part, is really trying to illustrate to us just how far he has fallen. Right? He didn't just lose a bunch of money. He has fallen so far because uh, Moses had made it clear already that pigs were not kosher. Pigs were unclean. You were not to touch and handle pigs. So for a Palestinian Jew, is, which is who this young boy would have been, for a Palestinian Jew to consider touching a pig, working with pigs, um, would have been the lowest of the low. I mean, it would have gone against everything he was. Yet he had no choice. That's how far he had fallen. It, and it was when he was at his lowest point, when he was finally at his, his absolute lowest he could ever get, that he realized, I need to go home. Now, he thought he needed to go home, not because he's like, well, I'm going to go and I, I'm going to try and just regain my former status. He said, well, I, I'd rather go be a servant for my own father because at least they've got food to eat. And so he says, well, I'm going to go home. They got plenty to spare, so he went. Traveled many miles and days so that he could plead for his father to accept him just as a servant. And on his way, he practiced what he should say. He, he practiced what he was going to do. Um, you know, once again, the customs of the time would have dictated how fathers and sons interacted. Therefore, the son knew that he would need to initiate the conversation. He'd have to start it off, you know, saying, okay, father, I have sinned against you in heaven, and, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. He, he, had, a, he, had, a, he had a plan, you know. How many of you can think of a time where you've had to rehearse what you're going to say before you go into a new situation, right? Yeah? You kind of have to practice what you're going to say. You get, work up the courage, work out the kinks, get your delivery right, you know? Yeah, I remember for myself, when I was growing up, especially when I was, you know, in high school age and we had football games or things going on, I wanted to go out with my friends, go do fun stuff. Um, I needed some money to go do that, right? Or I need to borrow the car. And so, you know, you, ha you gotta, you gotta work a strategy. You gotta figure out your, your way in to get the right answer. So, you know, you, I always would go to my dad first because he was the least, he didn't care as much. So he would just say yes. But you know, you, you have a way you go in and you walk by, just happen to pass by, see what he's doing, see what he's watching on TV or if he's reading something and wait and see, and then you, you go on your business. And then you come back, and what you up to? Oh, you know. Oh, you know, and then you strike up a conversation and talk about it, you know, show interest. Well, you know, I happened, you know, tonight's the football game. I thought I might try to go. Oh, yeah, but, you know, there's a $5 admission, and, you know, this and that, and, you know, you wiggle your way in, and next thing you know, 20 bucks later, and you're on your way. But it's all part of the process, right? It's all part of the, you know, you're rehearsing. You know, we, we can do this in our professional lives. You need to go, you, you want to go ask for that big raise? You want to go ask for that new project at work? You want to ask for the time off? Hey, I need a vacation. How am I going to work? You know, hey, I'll pick up some extra work here and there just to, if you can give me this. We, we do this, you know. I can think of, you know, 
if I, if I am going to Ashley with something that I know she's not going to like, you know, you've got you to gotta find your way to deliver the news or to give it with the best possible outcome. The younger son did what he was doing here. It made sense. It makes sense for him to get ready for it. But what he could not have predicted was what was going to happen when he approached his father's home. He couldn't have predicted the response that he had. It says that as he was still a bit away, but on his way, he was still a little back, the father saw him, ran to him, wrapped his arm around him with a big hug and a kiss. And right away, you can imagine the son just being completely dumbfounded. Like, wait, what? However, he had prepared his pitch. He had his story lined up, and so he went ahead with it anyway. You know, he said it, you know, I've sinned before you and God. Please accept me as your servant. I'm not worthy to be your son. But the father, he says, no, no, no. Go grab a robe and some sandals and a ring. Go get that fatted calf. We're going to have a party. We're going to do what we can to celebrate because you're home. And now it says here that the older son, who was out in the fields, and presumably had to work even harder to make up for the lack of the other son being there, so he had been doing double time. You know, he says that I've been working like a slave for you. I take that to mean that he's really been putting in the work, making up for his brother's absence. He comes back and finds out from one of the servants what's going on, and I think in a way, rightfully so, is a little ticked off. You know, I can relate to the older son here. I can understand what it feels like. You know, those of you that have siblings know what it's like when a sibling gets praised for something that you do all the time. I can remember growing up, you know, both my brother and sister um, didn't fancy school very much. You know, they did it. They went. They did what they needed to do. But it wasn't their favorite thing in the world. They didn't get the greatest of grades growing up. And if they're watching right now, it's true. You can be mad all you want. It's true, but yet, so if they did, you know, I remember my brother, he'd bring home a really nice report card one time and get some A's in there, and, you know, he'd get some money. And then I would come home with my normal A's and maybe a B or two, and I'd get, well, what would you get a B for? And I'm sitting here, where's my money? <laughs> so I know what it's like to feel like, you know, hey, why is, why is he getting rewarded when I've, I've been doing this the whole time? I've, I've been doing all... I feel like I've been doing the right thing here. He was upset, thinking, well, Father, I feel like I've been faithful and loyal, and I've done all the the things I should do, yet you haven't given me a party. You've never thrown a party for me. What's going on? But how the Father responds here is key. He says, look, son, you've been with me this whole time, and whatever I have, it is yours. Whatever I have, it's going to be yours. We're celebrating here because your younger brother was gone, he was lost, he was maybe even dead for all we knew, and now he has returned to us, and this is a joyous occasion. What the father in this story was seeking is exactly what God is seeking for each and every one of us, relationship. God has shown us through scripture that God, what God seeks most of all is to have a strong relationship with each of us, to be in relationship. Adam and Eve were created to walk and to talk with God, to be close with God, to be in relationship with God, to share in this beautiful creation that God had made. And when the fall happens, many people say, oh, the fall, you know, it came and it it happened because Eve took that fruit and ate it. Now that was one of the, that was the first step, right? But that's not where the fall happened. It wasn't like it was, she took a bite and boom, it was the fall. No, what I believe and what many other scholars believe is that the fall actually takes place just a little bit after that, right after that. Whenever they eat the fruit, what happens next isn't that um, they go to God and they say, God, you know, we messed up. We ate the fruit. We didn't mean to, but we did it. No, they went and they hid. They hid from God, breaking that relationship, which is what the fall is all about. When you hide yourself from God, when you turn from God, When you break that relationship with God, that is where the fall takes place. And moving past Adam and Eve, and after the fall, we find that now it is God's dream to renew, to reconcile and repair, and restore creation. That is the magnetic power in the parable of the prodigal son, pulling that prodigal son back home. What this story points us to is 
no matter how far we may fall, no matter how low we may sink to, no matter how bad it may get in our lives, God is always there waiting to embrace us again, trying to pull us back into relationship. God's love is so amazing that nothing we do can permanently separate us from God. His love is deeper and stronger and wider than we can imagine. We see this prodigal son tarnishing his father's name, squandering away his inheritance, doing things against tradition, breaking off his relationship with him by leaving, doing all of these terrible things. And yet when he returned, broken, poor, and ready to beg, he was met with a hug and a kiss. How amazing is that? How wonderful is it to know that we serve a God that's always working to restore us and to restore our relationship? We see this, of course, take manifestation in Jesus on the cross, and we see it each and every day as the Holy Spirit works within us to call us into the lives we've been called to do by God. And so as we're all embracing together this love that God has given us that is so amazing, that is freely given to us by God's grace, let us also try to mimic the same type of love to those around us. Let us open our arms to the broken, the poor, the hungry, those around us who are seeking more Let us open our arms and embrace them with the same love that God has given us and show them that the love that we're carrying, this this mercy, this grace that God has given us is meant for the world and is to restore the world. And let us, little by little, piece by piece, restore back the glory of God into the world around us. Amen. This is now a time for any and all of us to respond in a public way on God's call on your life, whether that may be a profession of faith Uh, Perhaps you have a transfer of membership for another church. Whatever you're feeling called to do this morning, please do so as we all stand up together and sing our invitational hymn. When you do this, remember me. It is so wonderful to join with each of you around this table that we have before us, this table which represents to us more than just Christ in his life, his death, and his resurrection. It represents the loving arms of the Father in our story today. This is the place to which you and I can come 
when we find ourselves in our lowest of places, when we find ourselves separated from each other and from God, when we find ourselves lost on our journey, we come to this table to be reminded of God's everlasting love, God's promise of redemption, and God's promise to continuously be with us wherever we may go. And so for each and every one of us, wherever you find yourself today, you're welcome at this table. Welcome to partake in these elements as they seek to empower you and strengthen your faith for the days ahead. And so we remember that night that Jesus was betrayed as he took a loaf of bread and he blessed it and he broke it saying, this represents my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup, he blessed it, and he said, Drink, for this is the new covenant in my blood. And for as often as you eat this bread and you drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until his return. Please join with us now in a prayer for the bread and for the cup. Like Mary, who gave to your son without restraint her costly gift of oil, anointing his feet, Help us to give ourselves to you also without restraint. Let us not count the cost, but dedicate ourselves to you, remembering all that you have done for us in your Son, Jesus Christ. By his body we are fed. This bread tells us of the great things you have done for us. As we eat it together, it reassures us that you will continue to feed us what we need. Holy Spirit, come, be with us as we come nearer to the time our Lord was crucified. Amen. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and pour contempt on all my pride. Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were a present far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. God, your love is so amazing when we think of what you have given us in your Son, Jesus Christ. It is the very wondrous cross that we celebrate at this table today, the cross of death, yet the cross of resurrection and life eternal in you. Help us to know the power of the resurrection and life in you as we drink from the cup made possible by this cross. Amen. Amen. And I invite each of you now to please join with us as we say together the prayer that was taught to us by our Lord and Savior. Our, our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. The elements are before you. Please join with me now in this holy meal. Amen. And now we may we please stand together as we sing our closing hymn, Go in Peace. <laughs> 